<clears throat> hey, what's up, everyone? This is Smoking Logan, your most beloved motherfucking CEO, of Cigar Federation. Uh, tonight we got something kind of different and special. So it's not technically a cigar chat, but it's actually better. And you'll see, Rob's not here. He had a, an emergency. He is not here. But we do have probably my my older if I if I had an older brother, <laughs> it, it would be you, John. We have John Huber. John, what's up, man? Hey. It's all good. I'm, I'm glad you said older brother and not like my father, because then that would have been really kind of tragic, I suppose. But yeah, good, man. How are you? No, you're not quite old enough to be my dad. I don't know. Good, brother. I mean... Where was... Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cheers. Yeah, man. Doing good. What are you drinking? Is that a... Oh, Corona? This is a Corona. So if anybody from uh, whatever bottling company is, they can put me on the comp list. Yeah, that's it. Just a little really? after, after work beer. While I wait for After dinner. Beer. Nice. Yeah, so, while oh, you're waiting for dinner. Oh, yeah. Why, no, why do you eat so no, late, by the way? We have dinner, but I'm waiting to eat it with my wife while I talk to you guys. What, what was your question? I'm sorry. What was it? I said, why do you eat dinner so late? It's not late, man. It's 7 o'clock right now. That's, you know, I mean, I usually I usually get home about 6.30-ish from the office, and then uh, it, it's always important to have dinner with the family. That's that's like a mandatory thing. That's, that's I agree. You know, I don't. I don't like to do the eat on the run and stuff. It's important to have a little quality time with my wife. So I agree. Yeah. I agree. So what we're doing tonight is, as everyone knows, John graciously made a cigar for to kind of honor my takeover cigar federation called the Buckingham, which I am smoking right now. I've heard of that. Is it good? I, I think it's pretty good, John. Uh, I think it's pretty good, considering okay. it sold out in 24 hours. Uh, I thought it was 12 hours we sold that out. If it was well, 24 hours, I got I got to do some work. So. Well, dude, it, well, it's true. I mean, until it can sell out in literally five minutes, like the dogma, we That'd got nice. we got a we got a high bar. But right. I think we could handle it. Who's so, dogma? What's dogma? That's the uh, the undercrown. Um, the special oh. told the undercrown for Dojo, man. Okay, gotcha. I know, man. No you gotta keep up with the time, Tommy. So what we're doing tonight is we're gonna invite uh, a few people on. Let them kind of hang out with John. We're just gonna, you know, shoot the ship. There's no, no format. You can cuss. You can do whatever you want. If you don't feel like okay. coming on, okay. Thank you, John. You know, You're have welcome. I ever told you how hard it is to have you on Cigar Chat? You love it. Come on, man. No, I it, love I'm you, Dad. I'll tell you what. It is. I wouldn't want to be you because it is a pain in the ass to deal with me, and that that can go for a multitude of people. But yeah, it probably is a challenge to have me on this show. But I appreciate you guys having me on the show. And oh, no, dude. I it's love you. Fun. I, I, I just, you know, it's one of my perks of the job is being able just to shoot the breeze, shoot the shit, what have you, about cigars. And You're one of my favorite people to do that with, Logan. Well, thank you, John. I'm going to go ahead and frame that frame with you with your fake tear, hang it up on my wall because okay. Rob's going to be really jealous. Yeah, and so, by the way, Rob, if you yeah. ever watch this or watch the replay of this, thanks for joining us or not. But, exactly. Uh, Thank you, yeah. Rob. Way to go. Appreciate it. Good Thanks job, Rob. Thanks for the support, bro. Hey, well, it's Rob, man. I mean, what can you expect? I can't hate uh, on Rob, though, man, because we're we're Bay Area boys until we have that bond, and I can't I can't hate on Rob. He's he's my guy. So, go Giants, go Niners. It's all right. Anyways, so let's let's do this. Let's start inviting a few people on, and Brandon O'Hanley. John put in a good word for you. That's right. That's just, my man right there. So what we'll end up doing is everyone, uh, if you're on Cigar Federation, make sure you're signed in. I will privately message you the link and just click on that link. You'll just have to download uh, the Hangout app, which should be pretty easy, and just come on in, and we'll just start hanging out. So I'm inviting a few randoms right now, and while they're waiting to join, we will... Just hang out. So we're hanging. We're hanging, dude. So, anyways, what are you smoking? What are you tell me are you about smoking Buckingham. Of course I am. Of course I am. Okay. Tell, tell me well, about what? What was the question? Well, tell me about your year. I mean, I think you've won. You know, obviously, Cigar of the Year on Cigar Federation. You've won. You know, a couple other number ones. I have a, a stinking suspicion you're probably going to be number one with one or maybe two cigars. Uh, taking that spot on the 
new media consensus compiled by halfwheel.com. And maybe. So why do you think last year was such a breakout year? Not that you, other years haven't been great, but why does last year everyone saying you had a kick-ass year? I mean, what was different? Uh, you know, honestly, the, the year, I always say this, all jokes aside, you're only as good as your manufacturer. And, you know, up until this past year, we had the privilege of working with Ernesto Perez Carrillo at La Alianza. Um, and then starting this year, we had the privilege of working with the Garcia family and my father's cigars. You know, I'd love to sit here and, and take credit for all the, the good things that happened in 2014. I mean, all I really did personally or all we did as, as, a, as a unit at Crown Heads was create the blueprint. But the delivery of that, the, the materials, the tobacco, the, the cigars, the blends, all, that's all the, the factories, man. So, you know, if anybody gets credit for any of this, it should be Ernesto and it should be Jaime Garcia, Jenny Garcia, Pepin Garcia, everybody at my father, everybody at La Alianza. They, uh, they're the ones that, that, that make it click. That's, that's the, the reality of it, man. I'd, I'd love to be able to say, oh, wow, you know, whatever, but uh, I'm just the guy behind the guy, man. You're just the guy behind the guy. Well, let me, let me ask you this. I mean, so you did the only cigar you did with Ernie last year was the Angel's Anvil, correct? Yeah, and we also did uh, Legito number six. We did oh, number six. Extension. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So other than that, I mean, the lion's share was my father. Correct. I mean, going with the new factory that you started with, I mean, usually it takes some learning time to get to know the factory, how they operate, you know, kind of their their quirks or whatever. Sure. I mean, was it that easy of an integration with my father, or did you just strike gold? You know what I mean? How how was the integration happened so quick, where you got up and running so fast? Um. It kind of goes back to uh, April of 2011 because when when we announced Crown Heads, Brandon's face was like larger than life on my screen. <laughs> I bet. I know. And he's talking. It's, it's kind of scaring me. Um, but going back to April 2011, uh, my father was one of the first factories that we had visited, um, and we discussed doing cigars with them and what have you. So. When I went back there at the beginning of 2014, it was, it was really like a follow-up, a part two to that visit, and we hit the ground running. You know, and the Garcias were very gracious to just welcome us with open arms and say, yeah, we'd, we're not really taking any new clients right now, but we'd love to do something with you. And, and you know, a lot of that, of that credit or that everybody's face is, like, larger than life. It's like, I know. And everyone, if you're not talking, go on me mute. out, man. I'm not used to this. this is okay, so I'm going to just focus on your face, John. What up, Because Rob fellas? usually manages this. It's just easier. Okay, now you can just see yourself. Okay. But anyway, that's the long and short of it, man. You know, it's just uh, you're, you're as good as, as the factory, and the factory is as good as the materials and the processing, and it's, it's not rocket science, you know. No, this is true. So you yeah, got three people. To, to, to wrap up your question, Logan, it, it, there is a really good synergy, a good working relationship with, with both Ernie, we have a great rapport, and with the Garcias. You know, I, I can go down there and spend you know, a few days in the factory and, and tell Jaime, okay, look, this is I want to do this, 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 this. And then you know, literally like the next day we'll have samples of Project 1, 2, 3, 4, what have you. And I mean, you know, it's like Pete, Pete Johnson told me something last year that I'll never forget. He's like, you know, when you start with great tobacco, it's really hard to screw it up. And I think the Garcias especially are, are in possession of some of the best tobacco in, in the world. I mean, the, the stuff that they have there is just it's second to none. And that's that's to their credit because they're growing it. They're doing it. They're vertically integrating it. Um, so, you know, we're very fortunate to have those partnerships. And without them, you know, I'd probably be, I don't know what I'd be doing right now. You know, God knows. Jeez. Be working for general. No, I would never be doing that. That's no, I'm kidding, that. dude. You I know would, what you I would be doing? I would go I'm back doing. to telemarketing yeah. dog shampoo and indoor tanning supplies before I do that. And I did do that. That's a true story. I, Actually, I, that, I, I wouldn't have guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that. Back in L.A., bro. When I, I wouldn't have guessed that. Back in the day, when I before I got in the cigar business, I was struggling, and uh, I had a lot of. I've had a lot of crap jobs, so um, you know, to, it's kind of nice to enjoy doing something that I love now because God knows <laughs> I wasn't back in the day, but yet indoor indoor tanning supplies and uh, Mr. Crystal's dog shampoo back in the day. Mr. Crystal's dog shampoo. True story. 
dude. Hand to oh. God. Yes, hey, sir. man. Anyway. Hey, there you go. So, anyways, we got some guests. We have Don. Uh, we also have your boy Brandon, and we have Andrew. I put you guys on mute because someone was over there clicking their fucking keyboard like so ridiculously loud. So, what's happening, fellas? Gentlemen, what's going on? Evening. What's up? And oh, nice to meet you. There we go. Nice and to meet I gotta say, uh, I have interacted with John a time or two before, and you sent me so, a couple of nice hats and some good cigars, and I do want to thank you very much. I've enjoyed them. My pleasure. And uh, they were some of the better cigars I've had. So, again, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for saying so. I appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity to enlighten you to the world of Crown Heads, I suppose. So, thank you. <laughs> In fact, the drumstick, I, I actually went out and got some drumsticks. Those are one of my favorite cigars of all time. Those are very good. Fantastic, man. You're a Lancero guy. You'll, you'll be, you'll be uh, very happy in about mm, seven or eight months from now. Oh, I'm not really a Lancero guy. It's just that I bought some drumsticks and I like them. So. Okay. You know, whether, right. it's, uh, whether they're uh, Lanceros or they're, uh, you know, 60-ring monsters, you know, it all depends on the cigar. It's a good cigar or sure. it's not. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. So, but I really did like it. Really did like drumsticks. Sadly, I can't find any anymore. But I really did like those. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, Brandon, how the hell do you know John, and why are you texting him before the show? <laughs> <laughs> I know John by just going up to Nashville and hanging out with him. We spent a day together, man. <clears throat> Fast yep. friends. We can't be At the fast CAO friends. offices, the land of Oz. Yep. Yeah, which we will no longer be in the land of Oz in the next two weeks. Seriously, you're actually moving. Yeah. Pay no attention. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain at Oz. We are out of there. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, it it was a good uh, a good place to be for the interim, um, but we've we've outgrown that space and that place, and. Uh, as I like to say, on to the next one. So we're, we're going to be in a – we've found a home that we'll hopefully call home for the next, say, three or four years. So wow. If, if we don't want to grow that again. so Pretty nice place, Oz is. Yeah, it was. It is for what it is. But um, it's very difficult um, to run a cigar business out of there. Um, it's primarily an events venue kind of a place now. It's not like what it used to be. So I would imagine – we're I'm drinking a, a tin fitty, so cheers, John. Salute. Cheers to you, man. So they still got you outside smoking? No, yeah. you know, uh, here's a story behind that. We, um, <laughs> we, we see, Logan, you've been in my office, too. So like three or you, four times. Well, we did, right. So the door that actually led out into the common the place of Oz, we, right. we, we, no, no, the other door, the actual oh, door that the, went the out. Oh, the actual door door, yeah, yeah. Right. We sealed it, duct taped it shut, sealed it all the way around with duct tape. Very, Jesus. Very natural of us. And um, so we're stuck in there. It's like a sealed tomb. So we're able to smoke in there. And then, But the catch of it is is to go into the building, to go to the restroom, the kitchen, what have you. You have to walk out to the patio around the front of the building and in that way. So that that's kind of how we've been able to um, get get through to this point. So you but, enter through the side glass door. Is that how you get into your office every day now? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it's it's been a real, real fun time. Um, but yeah, effective February second, we'll be in a new place, and that won't be an issue anymore. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. Where's so, it at in Nashville? It's in uh, an area called Metro Center, which is. Um, if you, anybody watching this knows Nashville, it's kind of like where the Titans practice facility, Comcast, FedEx. It's like in a big business park. So nothing fancy, nothing glamorous, but functional and really a big space we can grow into. We have 2,500 square feet of humidified warehouse with a loading dock and smoke friendly. So That's that was cool. kind of – yeah, that was uh, – I'm excited. So we'll get in there and we'll kind of make it our own space and – decorated as such and what have you so um, very much looking forward to having everybody kind of back together because right now we're very compartmentalized and it's I mean I find myself having to like call Adam or Mike or Wes on, on a cell phone even though they're in the building 
um, and texting them. It's, it's the communications is, is, is terrible. So this this will definitely improve upon uh, the work conditions. Is Adam going to be? How's that going to work for Adam? Because he still works for Oz, right? So uh, is he going to have to commute to both places? No, no. He, basically, we he's 100% crown heads. Oh, nice. So yeah, yeah. That's we're going to be. Yeah, we're, we're going to do big things in 2015. We're, we're, we're setting ourselves up to be able to function much more better. better When's the uh, ship date for the Jericho shots? The Jericho shots, <clears throat> excuse me, are uh, shipping mid-February. Nice. So they started production early December. We finalized the, the box cliche uh, earlier this week, which means yesterday. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. We got pre-release samples in at the office. I, I got them yesterday. They're smoking great. Um, very, I'm very excited to get that out. I mean, we're doing 1,050 count caps, and of those 1,000 caps, I think we have maybe 150 still remaining available. Everything else is pre-sold. So Nice. Yeah, yeah. You think it's a, a little late, though, man. It's starting to – it's going to be spring in Texas next week. <laughs> Did I ask you your opinion? You're on my show and my site, <laughs> homie, so you're going to listen to it. Hey, I, I don't know. Apparently, somebody thought it was a good idea because they bought 850 boxes of it so far. So, One person, actually, one store? One. Just one. Man, Re going deep, I see. <laughs> going deep no. on the shots. No, it, it wasn't late. I, I wanted it to be a seasonal thing. I wanted it to be you know, one and done before the spring because when sure. spring comes, we'll have, we're... You know, we've got other stuff lined up, man. This is all mapped out a year in advance. So, you know, we've, we've timing is everything. So as soon as shots is gone, it'll be something else. And after that, you know, there'll be something else. It, it's just the way it is. I mean, Take it out, over. That's what he does. He tries oh, to. Oh, yes. So oh, is it going to be man. as busy of a year, John, as last year? Pardon? I'm sorry. Are you going to yeah, be as busy? To be honest with you, it, yeah, it'll be as busy, if not even busier. We're just, I mean, I'm just, you know, in 2013, towards the end, I, I kind of sat down with Mike and I said, uh, you know, here's the blueprint. Here's the goal. This is the goal I want in terms of cigar sold. And he thought it was very aggressive and didn't really think we could do it. And I said, well, here's the blueprint and here's how we're going to do it. And I mapped it out to him and he says, great, if you can make that work, you know, let's, let's go for it. And um, I'm happy to say we surpassed that goal. So I'm taking the same blueprint from 14 and, and putting it in 15 with a couple of additions here and there. So, um, you know, you'll see Las Calaveras, obviously. You'll see an Angel's Anvil for the TAA. They asked us to do another TAA exclusive. Um, you'll see Mason Dixon in the fourth quarter. Hencho. <clears throat> What's that? <laughs> I said Hencho. What? what does that mean? The Concorazon. Oh, Echo Concorazon. Yeah, no, you won't see that. Not that I, no. no. That, that was a very uh, small project. I loved doing it. I loved the blend. I loved the, the whole concept. But I don't think we'll be doing it this year unless um, Hickory Cigar Club or Craycast asks us to do something for them. And that box you know. is not getting opened. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sexy little cigar, man. I wish we made oh one. Oh, my God, else. man. I, I was able to get a couple boxes. I got one opened and then one sealed. Nice. That's more than I got. I've got zero. Zilch, nada. Damn. You know. But, um, yeah, 2015 is going to be busy, man. Yeah. I mean, put it in perspective, 2013 was our best year, and 2014 we grew that by 75%. So that's, that's a huge, huge growth spurt for the third year of business. That's huge. So, uh, yeah, it is huge. And, um, I'm proud of our team, man. I'm proud of everybody. I'm proud of Ernie's Factory, Garcia's, everybody. Did you get the key? No. Yeah. Make sure you get the key. On the table or something. Look for the, look for the key on the table. <laughs> it's probably there. That's what happens when you have her. It's not you there. You never know what you're going to get. So, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a, we're very blessed, man. We're very fortunate, and um, it feels like we're getting to where we're supposed to be, and, and – uh, I'm happy, man. Happy but not gloating. I'm not sitting back going, oh, wow, we got this award, that award, best this, best that. That's all nice, but 
take a deep breath and go, okay, we're on to the next one. Let's go. Keep going, man. Don't take your, your foot off the pedal. I got a hard hitting question for you, John. Shoot. Yes, thank you. Someone else asked a question. <laughs> um, I'm sure you've seen in a couple of forums that you're ac actually active on. Mm -hmm. When you first started out, you were quoted as saying um, that you weren't into limited release kind of stuff. I know, I know where this is going. I know where this is going. <laughs> Go ahead and ask the question. Yeah. What has changed from that perspective then to how you run things now? In short, I, I believe that if you don't evolve, you'll get left behind. And I'm not saying that I had all the right answers at that time, but I felt like we reached a certain point in the evolution of the business that I had to evolve with consumer demand and, and, and what have you. And uh, I just saw a need. I saw with Mule Kick, when we came out with Mule Kick in 2012, I... I hadn't seen a reaction to anything we had done like that. I mean, we sold, it was by accident that we did Mule Kick, and we right. sold 5,000 5, cigars in like an afternoon. It was like that. And then what was more interesting is the phone kept ringing, the emails kept coming for, even to this day, we still get requests for Mule Kick. So I was like, there's something there. People want these small batch production things. People want, you know, what's new, what have you. So I felt like we needed to evolve with that market trend. And that's the simple answer, man. I mean, I would love to just have, like, I would love to be Padron and just have one brand and be able to make a living off of it. But my goal is to create a livelihood not only for me and my family but for other people that we employ. And to make it a financially viable business, you have to grow the company. And the way we're growing our company is by evolving with the time and the demand for things like Buckingham or – Chuck on Corazon or the TA exclusive. So, you know, I'm not saying we're going to keep doing that and growing that even more. I'm just saying that that's why we you saw the change in 2013 to 2014. There you go. So shut the hell up, haters. Yeah, haters. Haters. I got plenty. There's there's plenty of them. There's plenty of them out there, man. I would love. I would love to have a conversation with a few of them in particular. But well, if people aren't accusing you, know, you of cheating, or people aren't talking shit. You're not doing something right. That's just how it is. I guess you I'm know? doing something all right, but, you know. I, it's true, though. Man. It is what it is. You know, I, I'm not worried about it. I don't lose sleep over people that, you know, I, some of the stuff I read, and I read a lot of stuff, is, is crazy, you know, but whatever. You just kind of like, it's like dirt off your shoulder, right? You just kind of, and then you keep going. Yeah, so, man. Even, even with as busy you are, you're pretty active on uh, forums and all that. Touching mm -hmm. base with your fans and all that. I hate the word fans or whatever, man. Because I mean, I, to me, I think we're all just the same person. We're all cigar geeks, and I'm, that's how I got started in the business, and that's how I am in the business now. I mean, nothing excites me more than getting samples from the factory and, and testing it and seeing how the, it's progressing. And I'm a, I'm a geek. I muted John. Fuck. How do I un I don't know how to unmute John. John, unmute yourself. Did I do that? There we go. Okay. Yeah, and I think it might have been me. You're an idiot. You, you muted so like excited. five of us. I so, know because how many is over there? Who is, who's clicking away? Who's got fancy fingers? So how much of that? Did, <laughs> did, did, how much of that got muted, and how much do I need to readdress that? Basically, question? you said people are just people, and then that. No, I mean, I, what I'm saying is that you know I, I consider myself like a cigar enthusiast, cigar geek, what have you, and um, why shouldn't I participate on the forums like everybody else? I'm not. I'm not on the forums to 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 show my my cigar or anything like that. I'm on the forums to answer questions, to comment, to whatever you know. I just enjoy participating and interacting with people. So, Steve, you've been quiet. What do you got for John? Did you mute Steve too? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> I heard his laugh. I think jump jump right out there and just wow. Silence is golden. Anyways, John, I'll ask a question. Go for it. I mean, obviously you won. You've won uh, your cigars, you know, with 
new media lists and traditional media lists, you've done very well this year. I mean, several number one cigars, top 25, you guys have been, and it's not just been one cigar, it's been a little bit of everything. It's been Jericho Hill, it's been Los Calaveras, it's been Buckingham, it's been a good mix, right? Uh, which I think is a testament to how well you've done and how diverse you are, because, you know, a lot of companies are lucky to have one cigar, not let alone several. Right. If you, were, if you were to say one of your cigars should win the new media consensus list compiled by Half Wheel, uh, which one would it be and why? <laughs> well, what are the what's the criteria for said list? Well, you know, I mean, is it well, just think about the? I mean, it's pretty much the stuff you've you made in 2014. I mean, I, I can tell you what I would think would probably win the award, but I can. Well, tell me tell what you think will win, what, and what your heart would want to win. Oh, oh, man. Man. <laughs> anything. That's tough, man. I would think. Let's just put it this way. Here's how I'll answer the question. I think that the most uh, buzz acclaim over the course of the year was, to me, Las Calaveras. Um, do I think it was the best blend that came out of the collaboration between my father and Crown Heads? Subjective. I don't know, man. I, I think that you know, I think it's one of them. But I also think that Tennessee Waltz was a, a really, really great blend. I think um, the Arrington blend that we did, the Arrington Vineyards Double W, another, one of my favorites, to be honest with you. Um, but those, you're talking about two different cigars that, you know, most people aren't going to get a chance to try because one of them is exclusive to Tennessee and then one of them is even more exclusive because it's available at a winery and one retail cigar store. So it's hard, man. I mean, but I would say that, you know, if I, had a, if I was a betting guy, which I'm not, I'd probably say Las Calaveras probably had the best shot. I think so. Well, I mean, I think the Tennessee Waltz, was a great blend as well, but you only did it in Tennessee. I mean, right. it was there a reason that that wasn't the Los Calaveras or that wasn't the, you know, in the in the Mason or in the Mason Dixon? Is it just because it was limited tobacco to use, or you just is it, wanted to try? I mean, what happened or why? I think it was just a timing thing, man. I, honestly, I, I went down in January of fourteen and started working with the Garcias on blends of two projects at that point which is Las Calaveras and Jericho Hill. And, you know, I, I really only went through, like, maybe three renditions of Las Calaveras before I said, this is great, let's go with this. Um, you know, so at that point, I was just kind of like, okay, here's a starting point. But then as we got further down the road and I decided I wanted to do this Tennessee State exclusive, I said I always wanted to do something with Broadleaf. Never had the opportunity and asked Jaime if we could do something with Broadleaf. He gave me the green light. And that became Tennessee Waltz. That was our first broadleaf cigar, <laughs> broadleaf wrapper. So, um, so yeah, it wasn't like I thought. Okay, Las Calaveras is going to be Habano Escudo Eighth Priming. That's what we're going to do. I just that's what we started working with. So, and then Waltz, what happened, right? yeah, it just kind of happened organically, I guess. What band or uh, musician will we see resurrected in one of your sticks next? <laughs> That's a good question. That is an excellent question, but um, unfortunately, I don't have an excellent answer. I, uh, I I never really think about it in those terms. I don't think, okay, I, here's a musician or a band, and I want to create a cigar around it. It's just kind of like it's in reverse. It's like the cigar kind of comes first, and it's like, what is this reminiscent of? Or, you know, I, I, oh, so um, you, Tom Waits. Tom Waits is great, man. I'm a, I'm a, I, I love Tom Waits. My wife really kind of shined the light on Tom Waits for me, and I became a big fan of his Me too, lyrics. man. His, I had like, no idea who he was until my wife said, you need to listen yeah, to this. Yeah, and I just, I, I, I will Google, like, Tom Waits' lyrics just to, he's like a poet more than, than anything else. Yep. Um, but yeah, you know, this year, no, yeah, I'm thinking release-wise, and there's really no, uh, nothing, at least in the first two quarters, nothing musically inspired, really. All right. So, unless you call it uh, Jer will, Jericho Hill shots, what was that? Yeah, shots. I shots. Was gonna say, I was going to echo the fact that shots. No, I was going to say that you're right because you do do the cigar first because I've brought some pretty crazy ideas to you, and you basically laughed me out of the room with the concept <laughs> first before the cigar. 
And we won't even it talk about the crazy idea that, that John that got really angry at me about. Thing. It was a great it idea, though. Like, I'm telling you. I'm oh, telling you. We got, we got to hear that. It was never will I ever kind of an idea. I'm no, like, you basically no, told me, you're like, bro, <laughs> I'm not doing never. that. You can go to XYZ manufacturer and do that, yeah. but I'm not doing it. And I was like, okay, John, what's that? that? Let's just... Yeah, let's just we'll uh, pass on that one. And just keep going, but yeah. Yeah. Anyways, it was a, it was a great concept. It could have been cigar of the year. <laughs> well, I'm gonna say it just because I'm gonna tell them the concept because we're never it's never gonna happen. Correct. But I not with a us lot of. Though, but somebody. no, it won't. It won't happen. Period. It won't happen. Period. But the whole I spent a lot of time in India for work, and um, I was over there the last time, and I smoked a lot of cigars. And my counterpart over there, I got him into cigars, and. You know, we have our little driver will take us around, you know, the city and we'll smoke and we look at the people and stuff. It's like one of my favorite things to do is just people watching India. I know it seems stupid, but it's one of my favorite things to do. And we were at the, we were at a light, right? And uh, we had the windows down. We were smoking cigars. I don't remember what I was smoking. But this guy on a bike next to me starts screaming. And honestly, people in Chennai where I go, they speak Tamil. And it's literally like chickens screaming at each other is what it sounds like. It's just sort of this high pitch like deal. It's weird. But he starts screaming. He goes, Sir Tu, Sir Tu, Sir Tu. I'm like, Holy shit, what the fuck is going on? He's like, Sir Tu, Sir Tu. And I'm like, What the fuck? Well, he speeds off. I go, Rajesh, what the fuck just happened? He goes, Yeah, he was talking about your cigar. I go, What the hell, Sir Tu? And he goes, That's the Indian name for a cigar. So my idea was, <laughs> Why don't we create the Sir Tu and try to find some Indian tobacco to put in a cigar? Oh, fuck. I know, fucking mind blow, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh God. Anyways, so anyways, that will not happen. John, you either froze up or you're really looking disappointed right now. So angry. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a freeze up face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, so, you anyway. all didn't miss anything, though, basically, sir. <laughs> yeah, you didn't miss anything. So, I mean, one other qu a question that I have is that, you know, you've kind of gotten on a cycle where it's, you know, a, a core line release, and then the next year you do kind of a, a limited edition release um, of the previous year's core line. Are you doing the hideout? No. You should. As I told you, it wasn't going to happen, but no, we're not doing the hideout. No. But that's not you to say... pictures. Well, I posted pictures, yes. It looks like a dark wrapper. I mean, it almost, I could almost say it looked like a Maduro. I will tell you this. Last year would have been, going back to 2012, we did four kicks. Then we did Mule Kick, which was a limited edition for four kicks. Then in 13, we did the Drumstick, which was a limited edition for Hadley Grange. Yep. So last year, 14, would have been the limited edition release for J.D. Howard Reserve. But because... We had a pretty busy 2014. Obviously, I kind of tabled that. But um, this year, we will have a limited edition for J.D. Howard Reserve. Oh, yeah. So there, there will be something uh, small small batch, I suppose you could say, um, for J.D. Howard. So that's one of the one of the goodies we have coming out. Well, we uh, saw the snare drum last year, too. Snare drum. Yeah, we did that for uh, Rick Gadway at Federal Cigar. He was uh, one of the good people to approach us about doing a store exclusive, which uh, that was our first, actually. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I guess yeah, I didn't know that. Okay. I just thought about it. I mean, yeah. John, out of all the cigars you've ever created, which one is your favorite and why? I mean, I know they're all like your children. You like them all, but if you were sitting down, and I yeah. know you don't smoke at your yeah. house, right, but... I don't, you were going to smoke yeah. down, you were going to have a relaxing weekend with friends, maybe cook out, do whatever, and just relax. What would be the Crown Head Cigar you'd pick up, assuming you had all of them at your possession? Wow. Um, I mean, they all kind of hold a special place in memory, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, Las Calaveras, you know, I mean, even four kicks, man. It's like, like, it's like your first kid, you know, and then, then you've adopted... Ten kids after it, practically. Right. You know, it's it's it would be really really difficult to pick one. I mean, sentimentally, I mean, I think Four Kicks would be a special cigar for me um, because it was our first one that kind of got us off the ground. But then, by the same token, 
Tennessee Waltz has a special place in my heart because of the the inspiration was is you know was in my grandfather and my grandfather is you know like the most uh, important male figure I ever had in my life. So Tennessee Waltz is is definitely got some emotional value to it as well. But man, it's just it's hard, man. It's hard to pick one. It really is. I almost would decline to answer that question. <laughs> so. Correct Sorry. answer, Buckingham. <laughs> ah, yeah, right? Huh. Minus 200 yeah. points. Minus That's 200 right. points. Right. All right. Is uh, Shots the first petite Corona that Crown Has has ever done? Yes. Yeah. I mean, the closest that we really came um, in terms of, you know, I don't know if it's any mystery, but I'm not a big ring gauge, big cigar guy. You know, yeah. I've kind of gone on record as saying that we would never do a 6x60 six or seven by 70 or whatever that crazy thing is. But, you know, like um, four kicks, we did a 5 5 h 46 Corona Gorda right out the gate. And Mike thought it was going to be a loss leader. He's like, nobody's going to buy it. I'm like, mm, watch. To this day, Corona Gorda and four kicks is one of the best selling sizes. Um, and then with Hadley Grange, you know, like the Eminentis, you know, that's a, that's a small ring gauge cigar. Uh, it's a 44 ring gauge um, and then when we did the 44S in Jericho, that's 5 and an eighth by 44. So, you know, you're talking about small cigars that are pretty close to what you can almost call for the Corona. But right. this is the smallest cigar that we've created, which is Shots, which I wanted something that was premium at a good price point that was small enough to smoke and enjoy during the cold winter months. So I've had a few in the office out of this last batch, and, I like to tell people to quick smoke, but I mean, you know, depending upon the the rate in which you smoke it, it could it could last you close to an hour. It's a, it's a it's a great little flavor bomb. It's a good smoke. Yeah. So then, was it anything particular about Jericho Hill, like the tobacco or something like that, or it was more just the timing winter cigar type thing? Totally timing winter thing. I mean, the demand for Jericho really kind of exceeded even our expectations. Um, we started shipping Jericho in mm -hmm. August. And immediately sold out the first order, which is all the, the trade show orders from the IPCPR. And then put in another purchase order and sold that out. And then another one and sold that out. And this went on for five orders before the end of the year. I mean, we couldn't keep it in stock. So that being said, since the popularity of Jericho, we, I said, well, winter is a great time for a small, just do a small quick smoke. And... Uh, Mike Condor, a business partner, he's he's that's like his favorite size. He's he loves. He's like, can you have Jaime roll something that's like four by forty or something, or have Ernie roll something that's like four forty size on the smoke in the office? And uh, so this might be a good opportunity actually to kill two birds with one stone. So hence the four by forty two Jericho Hill. That's all. Is it six bucks or five ninety five? Five ninety five. Yes. I mean, how's it compared Which, to the other? I mean, the other Vitolas of Los Calaveras. I mean, was it blended to kind of match, or is it different since we're in a smaller ring gauge? It has nothing to do with Los Calaveras slogan. It's I'm sorry, Jericho Hill. Jericho Hill, man. You're at least only cigar that can't straight. You flip flopper, <laughs> doing all these limited editions. Woo! Um, to comparison wise, for Jericho Hill, the five and one eighth forty four, the forty four S. That's seven ninety five MSRP. So we got a four by forty two coming out. It's five ninety five. So it's two dollars less. But they won't be around that long. I mean, they're, it's a seasonal thing. It's it, the way I try to explain it to <laughs> retailers is, it is a seasonal release (parentheses winter) in limited quantities (parentheses fifty thousand cigars) and then that's it until winter two thousand sixteen. We'll do it again. When did fifty thousand cigars become limited? Um, when I think like seasonal release. I think <laughs> Nahe, like candy cane, right. maybe like no, Logan, you remember. cigars. Do you know I what mean, I mean? It's limited because we, you know, we started with sixty stores, right? And right. as of today, we're six hundred and thirty-six. So when you have a thousand boxes for six hundred plus stores, that's pretty limited, man. That's that's like you're not even gonna get two boxes per store. So that's why why it's limited. In my there's eye, a lot of people slacking on Jericho Hill. I just did a road trip um, through Georgia and Alabama, stopped at three different shops that carried crown heads, but they didn't have any Jericho Hill. I told them they were slacking. 
Yeah, you know, and it's it's not their fault. It's more ours because we really haven't had a dedicated representative for Alabama or Georgia up until recently. Um, you guys probably know Wes, Wes Thornton, um, who t he continues to be oh, our yeah. brand. Yeah, he's our brand ambassador. I mean, he's going to be the guy you're going to see at the multi-vendor events. He's going to be the guy representing the, the company out there. And um, But effective this year, we, in addition to those responsibilities, we've also given him a dedicated territory. So he has the, uh, the dubious responsibility of actually not only being the national face, but also representing in Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Carolinas, so you know, and a few other places. So hopefully, you know, once we get a little bit more face time in the stores, um, that that situation will be alleviated. I mean, you, you know, you can have the best cigar in the world, man. And it's like. People don't know about it and you're not in the store with a representative. It's very difficult in this marketplace. It just is. You know. That's why I rely on, on social media so much and, and good people like you guys to kind of spread the word a little bit because we just don't have the, the infrastructure to be in all these stores and you know, have a, a, a sales team. So Right, right. <clears throat> well you know I'm out there. We're working on it and I appreciate you guys supporting, definitely. What else you got, Logan? And I'm waiting for other people to ask questions. I mean, I, we could talk all night, John. Mm -hmm. Older brother, best friend. We could, actually, man. We hung out at the office one day, and I literally spent like six hours shooting the breeze. We did. Yeah, we did. Good good and you recorded everything, and you'll probably be used as blackmail against <laughs> me at any point. Yeah, one of these days. One of had these the, days, you'll just had the fucking, GoPro burn the corner. Me. fucking burn me. There you go. There burn you. notice. Uh, but, uh, no, I mean... Uh, you know, John, I think I think a lot of people are excited to, you know, see, you know, see what you guys definitely come out with this year. You know, one thing I've seen, there's been a, a couple of sites, and I won't name which ones, that, you know, have been big Crown Heads fans and then have kind of maybe turned south with the turn to kind yes. of my father and using that. I mean, I mean, what do you think drive is driving that? I mean, obviously, you probably don't know. You haven't spoke to these individuals. Is it just... I mean, I personally like every kind of everything you've done. I mean, I think everything, you know, stuff you've done with Ernie is great. I think you've kind of taken it to a new level with my father. But that's just more in my kind of wheelhouse and my profile, but that's just me. Right. But do you think it's the people that do hate? Is it because you've kind of made a dramatic switch and kind of factory in style? Or is it just they don't understand it? I mean, what do you think drives the, the fucking haters? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't know. I, you know, I, I never really gave it much thought, man. To be honest with you, I don't, I don't know what's in the mindset of somebody that hates on somebody else. I don't know. I mean, listen, the reality of it is, is you're not, not everybody's gonna like every single product, project, what have you that you put out. And I get that. I mean, everybody's taste is subjective. You know, some people like Pinot Noir, some people like Bordeaux, some people like, you know, Petit Coronas, some people like six by sixties. But that being said, I mean, I think there are a few individuals out there. Uh, that I'm not going to name, but they go out of their way to deliberately try to sabotage other what people are doing. You know, I mean, when when you have a cigar, let's say for instance, like Las Calaveras, that is that widely accepted and that critically acclaimed, and you know, whatever. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but obviously, it had to be a pretty good cigar to get the attention that it received. Um, I don't think it was a conspiracy that it, it got that kind of attention. But I read somewhere where one guy actually said, um, I hate the blend. It's a, it's a bad cigar. It's such a bad cigar. I'll even go on record as saying it's the worst cigar that's ever come out of the My Father factory. And that was about Las Calaveras. So as soon as that person said that, I was like, there's no winning this person over. And I don't care what we did or what we do. It, He's just going to continue down that road of like, I hate Crown Heads, I hate John Huber, I can't stand what they stand for, blah, blah, blah. He probably so didn't it, even you know. like the movie Fight Club. Yeah, what a dick. <laughs> what a fuck. <laughs> no, that's, that's a true story. Oh, but a I, don't sit around, I don't sit around going, well, why did he say it? I'm, I don't really care, man. You know, it's like, I'm, life is good. Life is, is a huge blessing to me, man. I'm happy. I'm doing what I love to do for a living. I have a great family. I have a great working 
team, and I'm, I mean, I'm in an industry that I love. If that guy wants to sit there and sit behind his computer all day and say Crown Heads is crap and Las Calaveras sucks, and uh, that makes you happy, son, then go on and do it. Do yeah, your stuff. You know, along with what he said, it's, I had a uh, Jericho Hill the other day, and I just didn't care for it. I mean, mm -hmm. it burned well. It was constructed nicely. I mean, it, it, you know, you look at it, it was a nice cigar and right. and everything. I just didn't care for it. But this, this afternoon, I smoked a uh, Mason Dixon, mm -hmm. and I liked that one a lot. I've right. had the uh, drums. I've liked them a lot. And, but then I've had a couple things I've really liked, a couple I didn't. But I will say, for every one of the cigars I've had from there, they've all been well made. I may not have cared for the flavor profile, right? But they were well made. I mean, they burned well. They, they were, uh, you know, they held together. They didn't blow up and fall apart. But you know, everybody's not going to like everything. Amen. So. Amen. Exactly. And like I said, it's why we make different things. It's why. But it's, it's one thing to say, I tried it, it's not for me. And then it's another thing to go out of your way to say, this is the worst cigar that ever came out of that factory. Who are you to say that's the worst cigar that ever came out of that factory? That to me says that that person has some sort of a grudge, vendetta, some sort of whatever. And as Logan said, it is a hater. Um, hater. And, you know, it's like, look, man, I mean, whatever. It, <laughs> Honestly, I don't lose sleep over it. It's just uh, I just keep doing what I'm doing and having a good time doing it and feeling very fortunate and blessed to be in the position I'm in. So, yeah. Question, John. Yeah. This is this is a mind blow question. You did the Mason Dixon, mm -hmm. which I thought was a great concept, except I did give you the feedback as you forgot the border states. Right, right. Which would have been a freaking great concept, but that's all right. You didn't ask me first. <laughs> now, you, so it's two cigars and playing off. If you were to yeah. take that concept and do it with, say, a manufacturer or a brand uh, owner, whatever, who would it be and why? With two could different it factories? John, it could be the same factory. It could be different factories, but it would be packaged together, and maybe it's Mason Dixon and somebody's in the north. Maybe you're from the south because you are kind of from the south. And the other person maybe from the north or whatever, however you wanted to do it. You know, off the top of my head, I'd probably, I mean, the concept was to create two bipolarly different blends, which is why you had, you know, Connecticut Ecuador versus Connecticut Broadleaf. Um, and if I were going to repeat that with factories and I wanted some bipolar blends, you know, I'd probably think about maybe, you know, I would, I think it'd be interesting, you'd go with something like maybe Davidoff on the mild to medium side and then go to Roma Craft with Skip Martin and have him just do some ass banger, just heavy, heavy oh, shit. shit with the Roma plugs. Yeah, and just do <laughs> like the yin and yang, you know, like, you know, just something like soft and grassy versus like just pepper and leather and just balls in your face. I mean, I, I love what Skip's doing, man. I mean, I'm a big fan of Roma Craft, so. Did that's you just say like balls in your face? No, ballsy, like gutsy. <laughs> <laughs> Going nowhere, <laughs> going nowhere uh, fast. Yeah, no, no, no. But that, that would be like the, the 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 complete 180. You know, just do something like that, possibly. You know, um, yeah. There's there's so much good stuff out there, man. It really is. It really is. I mean, I'm a fanboy with uh, with Skip stuff. I'm a fanboy with uh, Kyle stuff at Warped. Um, I think uh, La Colmena was probably one of the more distinctive cigars. Unique cigars that I smoked cigar. in 2014. I thought it was a very good cigar, and it's not exactly like my wheelhouse, so to speak. It's not with it. you know. I like the the big fruit forward blends heavier, but I appreciate it for what it was, and I really, you know, there's it's it's a good time to be a cigar smoker right now, man. There's some good stuff coming up. What kind of uh, changes, if any, can we expect for Calaveras 15? Um. Yeah, there will be changes, absolutely. That was always the, the concept from day one. Um, blend, everything. It's going to be a Packaging. completely different cigar? Completely different cigar. Um, cool. You know, the I tweeted a couple of pictures already, but um, uh, the wrapper in 2014 was uh, Habano Oscuro 8th Priming, so you had that really dark, heavy wrapper. A lot of people mistook it for broadleaf. It's not broadleaf. It's it's Habano. Um, this year's version is going to be Habano Masado. 
So a little bit more of a traditional, you know, Colorado brown, dark, juicy, oily wrapper. Yeah, all Nicaraguan cool. binder filler, all yeah. from the Garcia's Farms, um, which to me is what makes the difference in the blend. Heavy, spicy, sweet, robust blend. Um, and the packaging. The packaging will be reminiscent of 14, but the color combination will be a little bit different. Nice. Uh, the initials on the bands will be different, obviously, for people that have passed away last year and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it'll be a completely same but different, basically. Yeah, the nice. blend. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about the blend. Well, I the first stronger. <laughs> yeah, man. We were, uh, I'd started working on the blend in July of last year and wanted to tweak it. And so we went down there again uh, most recently in December and I asked Jaime to increase the strength, make it stronger, give it more body. And that was the first cigar that uh, I had in the in the truck on the way from Managua to Esteli and, and Wes was with me. And, he smoked one. I got very quiet. I said, "You all right?" And he's like, "No, nah, this thing is like just killing me." It's like, <laughs> it's, it, and I loved it. I mean, that that particular robusta that I smoked was probably one of the best cigars I smoked last year. I was I was like, "Oh my god, this thing is amazing." I like. I'll be honest with you. I like this year's blend better than I did last year's blend. Right. Well, the the pre-release um, fourteen Calaveras to the production release, 14 Calaveras. Was there any kind of changes there? Because the pre-release kind of spun me off. I don't know if I smoked it on an empty stomach or what it was, but that seemed a little bit stronger than the, the regular release. Uh, there really wasn't a pre-release in 14. I mean, we seeded out a few samples here and there. But, right. um, you know, the funny thing about Las Calaveras 14 is it was our very first project, a collaboration with the Garcias. And nobody had smoked the cigar, nothing. And we, we go to sell 3,000 boxes of it. We didn't know what to expect. Nobody smoked it. Nobody even wanted to smoke it. They said, give me X amount of boxes. We sold out the 3,000 boxes in about a week, which is unheard of for a cigar that nobody's ever tried. Nice. Fortunately, the cigar lived up to everybody's expectations. So, yeah, there wasn't – there really wasn't – I don't do a lot of – seeding with pre-release samples. I'll give a few here and there. People come to the office, I'll send a couple, whatever, but right. the last time, I remember when we, we were blending four kicks, I kind of uh, <laughs> took a different approach that I never took since that point, which was I sent out three variations of it to various bloggers, people, whatever, with like a little rating sheet and everything, and I still have the files on that thing, man. Um, and the funny thing is, out of the 12 people that evaluated it, 10 of them picked what became the final blend. We had already decided what the blend was going to be. Um, but, I mean, I got like a litany of stuff from some people, like flavor wheels and the first, third, second, third, third, third. Like It was like a thesis. That I got I was like, <laughs> way too much information, man. I'm like, I'm never doing this again. I'm like, nah, never. So ever since then, I just kind of, I, I pretty much picked the Finalize the blends. I don't really involve too many cooks, man. Spoil the soup. <laughs> now, all that flavor wheel stuff, that's just, for me, it's just too hard. It's, it, I like it. I like I, it or I don't. That's enough. I like I it or agree, I don't. I agree, man. I'm with you, Don. I don't, uh, I think it takes away from the experience of smoking a cigar where you have to sit there and concentrate and try to just, you know, discern certain flavors in the first, third, second, third, 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 and was that nutmeg or was that cumin? Was that black pepper or white pepper? Was that leather or was that wood? It's just it's just detracts from the process of smoking a cigar to me. To me, it's just an overall experience of either I like it and I'm enthusiastic about the blend or, I, or I'm not. It's, it's like yes. a gazillion cigar reviewers online, and the only thing I do with cigar reviewers is I look at it and says, okay, this guy's liked half a dozen cigars I've liked. So if he likes this new one, odds are I will. If he doesn't yeah. like it, odds are I won't. Right. That's enough. Every anything else is does it taste like nutmeg? Does it have a hint of watermelon in it? I don't care. You like I, it or not? Is it I well? I can appreciate like watermelon. The... I know you. <laughs> but Logan is the. Uh, That's a know, different company he, now. He's the MFCO, and he's the. And, and I know. He's the man. Michael Jesus. He's, 
got to know that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, the cigar juice. Yep, yeah, yeah. plus he's car carrying the general on his face. Exactly. You know, I, I I'll be honest with you. I appreciate uh, like kind of the romance behind the flavor descriptives, and and I think that's good for the industry, good for the business, and I'm I'm just not good at that. Um, so I just to me the the main components when evaluating a cigar are the flavor and the aroma. Um, as far as the burn goes, I've seen people. I've actually seen people post pictures on blogs and reviews like the burn got a little wavy and it's like this little iota of a just a little part and that is a pet peeve of mine. It's like that's why you have a lighter. Touch it up, smoke it. It's about tasting it. It's like when you have a glass of wine, do you like look at the glass and say, oh, well, there was I had to wipe off the glass because it had tannins on it or something. Who cares, man? How does it taste? Are you enjoying it? What have you? And that the the burn thing's a big big thing. If the if it doesn't stay lit, yeah, you got construction problems. But if it you got to correct the burn line, it's a naturally made product. People, it's like, relax. It's, if the cigar burned perfectly, completely linear, then there's probably something machine made about it, and it's not right. You just have to appreciate what it is. That the burn thing is. Amazing. I was like, Lord, get over it. Anyway. Anyways, all right, John, we got one minute. Are there any so final far. questions from the from the peanut gallery? Where's mine? Oh, sorry, wrong form. Yeah, no questions for you, Don. <laughs> all right, well, John, appreciate you taking the time uh, coming on That's and supporting fun, us. Man. Appreciate That's you fun. obviously doing the Buckingham for us. I know I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. We look forward to hopefully doing something later this year, but that is TBD. Uh, at this moment, and yeah, just appreciate it, John. Thanks, thanks for everyone coming on and watching. And Thank you, guys. thanks for hosting, Logan, and yeah, thanks, John. That's what I do, baby. So yeah, everyone have a great night, and hey, we will see you guys on Thursday with Taboo Cigars. All right, <laughs> bro, have a great night. night. Take care, bye -bye, guys. guys. Appreciate everybody's support. Thanks. All right, bye bye. Bye bye.